to the second video in a three-part series titled Mirror Mirror on the Wall. In today's video, I would like to walk us through six signs, at least six signs, that shows that we need to improve on our self-image. Let's get into it. In the first video, we walked through what is self-esteem, what self-image, and what self-respect. In this video, we want to look at the signs that shows we would need to improve our self-esteem and self-image. Let me quickly walk us through a quick story. I'm sure you all remember where the word mirror, mirror on the wall has come from. It's from the popular Cinderella story. I was just trying to do some research and look at that story again. What exactly happened in that story? The witch, which we all popularly know was also in our own beautiful way, was beautiful, asked the mirror regularly, mirror, mirror, who is the fairest in the town? The mirror keeps coming back with the same answer and that answer is Cinderella. And that keeps on bringing out that um, anger in the, in the queen. What the queen actually wanted was the beauty of Cinderella in herself and the mirror confirming that she was the fairest in the town or in the city. But that didn't happen and that was the cause of the jealousy. Many of us are like that today. We keep finding ourselves facing that mirror of life and keep asking, who is the wealthiest? It never calls your name out. You want to be as wealthy as the wealthiest, but you still are not there yet. You keep wanting to be like that friend of yours, but anytime you check yourself, you still know where you want to be. So this makes me to understand that self-esteem is exactly how we feel about ourselves. And what creates that feeling is our self-image. You see, the self-image is the picture that you hold about yourself inside your head. It's that mental picture. Now, come to think of it, most of us never think of that picture. We just keep going through life. Well, but I want to tell you that we all have the capacity and the ability to be self-aware. There is something we call self-awareness. And self-awareness is the capacity for us to use our imagination to look at our lives outside our lives. Now, I'll try, I'll try and explain that. If you take a bottle of water and you, look at the, you try to look at the sign or the label from inside the bottle, I'm sure it will be very difficult to read. Now, self-imagination is the ability to imagine yourself outside your body and taking a third person look at your life. Now, we all have the capacity for self-awareness, but we hardly use it because the use of that tool, self-awareness, is what helps us, is, 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 is what helps us to be able to improve ourselves. Self-awareness is what is that tool that helps us to know that we're still there and we are able to carry on. We need to be conscious. We need to be conscious. We need to be, we need to be able to know that we have that imagination. It's an imaginative and a cognitive ability that helps us to look at ourselves from outside ourselves. Now, the picture you need to be growing, it needs to be a change, it needs to be changed. And that picture is what creates everything. And so if you don't feel good about yourself, if you feel inferior to others, then we need to do something about picturing ourselves. Now, I've had my own battles and my own issues with self, with, with, with self-image and self-esteem. Um, I'll just like to say this story quickly. You see, growing up in Africa and then coming over to the United Kingdom, anytime I'm trying to do things, I always still think back of those humble beginnings and, I, and it keeps drawing me back at the time. But I got very lucky and I got the opportunity to work with a coach to help me come out of that low self-esteem. You know, people look at you at times and say, oh, you have all the self-confidence you need, but you know in yourself you're drowning. So that's why we need to be very, very um, ready in ourselves to walk through and to be able to lift ourselves out of that position. Now, let's let's look at the first sign. What's the first sign that needs improvement? I've, I've, I've decided to just say it. Number one sign, number one, it's comparing yourself with others and making yourself feel inferior. See, I've been there, as I've said before, and the assumption is that every other person is better than you. There are many things that create that feeling. Now, let's look at some of those things that create that feeling. You just realize that at work you've been scoring low on your performance or in your life pursuit, in your life goals, you've not been doing very well at them. Or maybe obviously you don't have as much money as some of your colleagues or some of your friends. You see, you look at the kind of car they drive or maybe, let me even use this, your kids. <laughs> 
your children, you know, you're dropping them off at school and they decide to say, Dad or Mom, please don't drop me next time. Can we just uh, park very far off the school? Because they're already comparing the kind of car you drive to the kind of car their mates, parents are driving. Or is it the kind of clothes or, you know, the kind of food people eat in their homes and you've been privy to go in and the way they've served the table and you're making this, you know, get to you. Now, the feeling about yourself is not beginning to control you. You're not beginning to compare yourself with other people and it's causing you to feel less or inferior about yourself. That is a sign that we need to fix something. Now let's go to the second, the second sign. The second sign is difficulty to accept compliment or to compliment others. Now you might say this is, oh wow, how is that? Now you're wearing a very nice perfume. You know the name, you know you spent some good money to buy this good perfume and you, you go into a meeting or you go into a gathering and someone says, wow, you're wearing a nice perfume, you smell good and you just begin to hate yourself for it. Now, what are we saying here? The sign is clear that you can't say, oh, thank you, yeah, it's, it's, it's Chanel. It, it, you know, you can't just simply say, oh, it's YSL. You can't simply say, oh, thank you for the compliment. It's difficult to, you know, accept the compliment. And it's even difficult for you to give compliments and say, oh, you're looking good today. You know, you want to, you, 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 that jealousy is there to say, or that envy is there to say, I want to be like this person. But you should be able to compliment, because what you compliment is what you attract. You know, you compliment a, ni a, a nice car from your friends, or you compliment a nice accomplishment that someone has had, a new, a, the PhD degree, the master's degree. You know, when you compliment things, you yourself are attracting some form of it to yourself. Now, it's very important that be inability to compliment others and be able to accept you know compliment either for achievement of success or not, it's it's taking away a lot from us even not achieving in our own in our own right so that's a sign the second sign that we need to fix something there now let's go to the third sign here the number three sign that we need to fix our self-esteem and our self-image is being very defensive in conversations and how do i mean being defensive you see <laughs> The two things here, there is the concern and there is the personality. When someone is raising a concern, not accusing your personality, being defensive and just jumping into it to say, oh, you're, not addre you're, you're addressing me, what's the issue? That is a sign. It just shows that there's something that we need to fix here. You know, It, it happens in meetings, it happens when colleagues are, have, are having conversations. You, it, it just shows immediately that there's something that needs to be turned around and fixed in there. You know, that's a sign that you are protecting something. You know, the, 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 the defensiveness is a sign that you are defending or protecting something. And that person is that inferior personality in you. I know many people say, but we have different personalities. Yes, we do. But in this case, what you're trying to defend or protect is that ego of your own bubble. You don't want anyone to hurt that bubble. So you, you jump Instead of addressing the concern, you jump straight and say, stop talking about me. But they're not talking about you, they're raising a concern. Deal with the concern. It could be you, it could be the meeting. The fact that we're doing that shows that we need to deal with something. Now, let's move to the fourth sign. Now, the fourth sign is simply called the lacking confidence in social skills. We are all social animals, we're all social beings. Yes, you might be, um, um, you might not be um, someone that's socially out there. I'm not myself. I I like to keep you know. Pri I like my privacy. I like private. I like a private life. You know, quiet. But that doesn't mean I can have a simple conversation. You see, nobody on this earth is 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 perfect. You see, the person you're talking to has some issues. But when you understand the power of leveraging other people's um, leveraging ability, you'll be able to walk through social your social skills. Social skills is simple. It's it's not that you want to be out of your private zone. No, 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 no. So be, being a social person and having the right social skills is ability to have a quality conversation, a productive conversation, is ability to be able to leverage on with other people your own skills and their own skills to get to success. So the fact that we refuse to venture and become the social person that we are and have it and lacking those social skills shows that there's something that we need to fix here. Now I've said, I've said before that everybody has issues. Everybody has something they're trying to work on. But the fact is, we need to be able to improve ourselves day by day. You see, why some people are more successful than others is they've taken the opportunity to develop themselves better. So we need to be able to come to that same understanding that as we need network. We need to network. 
we need to go into ventures with people. We need to stand together with people. We can't just be on our own. So we need to own our skills of social interaction. We need to develop our skills of social, of, of being social. So it's, the, the lack of it, the, the lack of that confidence to have conversations, to, have, to e develop our social skills is a sign that we need to develop something there. Now let's go to the fifth one quickly. Now the fifth one, I need to be very careful with this because I've used the word there, overly. Now being overly self-conscious, because self-conscious is required in life, but being overly self-conscious about your status, about your appearance, and about your performance. Overly self-conscious. You know, there is a balance between overly self-conscious, there is a balance between consciousness and awareness. Now being overly is a sign that there is something, there is a problem. And that problem is not on the outside, that problem is in the inside and needs to be fixed. You see, I've sat in groups before, I've met people before, and the fact that I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, this person knows how to speak better than I do, you know, it gives me concern already that I need to fix myself, I need to calm down and I need to just take a step back and think of how to address some, some things. So you sit in a meeting and you're already thinking the next person beside you is better than you, or the person sitting at the edge of the seat the, 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 is better than you, no. This destroys a lot of our relationships because nobody has everything. The fact that someone has something. I read a book recently titled The um, 100 Steps of Parenting. I, I think written by Mr. Templar. Now, it's, it talks about something. The fact that someone is doing something doesn't mean you don't have it better in a different way. Someone might be intelligent in, in their performance at work, but you might be you know, tagging along but there's something that you, you, you have leverage over that person in doing. You may have some kinetic um, skills that the person doesn't have. I don't have the ability to run fast like Wilson Bolt, but I know I have some things that I could do and I could do them better than he. So it's the same with you. You can't think of someone better than you, but what you need to do is develop the skill that you have. Don't make yourself become very, very, uh, don't, don't make yourself become invincible uh, invisible, sorry, Inv invisible. Make sure that you're visible in the way that you can show yourself in, in your conversations, in your doing things. Now, because people's opinion are opinions, everybody has a mind. And don't let other people's opinion about you drive you back into low self-esteem. Now, I want us to do something here. It's, it's high time in life to stop setting impossible standards for ourselves. No one especially on social media, we ever post their bad side. So stop setting some impossible <laughs> because no one is perfect in life and everyone has their own issues that they're solving. So don't try to set impossible standards for yourself. In one of my videos, if, you, if, if, if you've not watched that, which is the tools you need to be successful, one of those things is setting tangible goals. Try and set tangible goals. If you exceed them, kudos but don't set yourself impossible tasks. You see, having a negative outlook on life, being pessimistic, just looking at life from the negative side always can decrease your ability to move on. It's a sign of low self-esteem. Life should be taken from a neutral perspective. You don't see things, you don't, don't just see things the way they are. Try and see things the way they should be. You, you see things the way you are. Most times we see things the way we are. I could see black, someone else could see white. We see things the way we are. The person inside is what we need to change, to see things the way we are. You need to fix yourself. You need to make the giant in you arise. Now, let's look at the last one here. This is a bit, um, I'll, just, I'll just try and touch on the sixth, on the sixth sign. The sixth sign is when you, sh you cannot accept responsibility or admit mistakes. Now, I will call this shifting your responsibilities to others. I'm not talking about delegating your, your tasks or things. I'm not talking about delegation here. This is not the power of delegation. This is the inability to admit mistakes when you commit mistakes and say, oh, my bad, that's wrong. I will not, I will. You see, yes, I know it's difficult at times, but when you do something that you know, you, you can learn from it. Ability to learn from mistakes, make sure that you don't do it next time. So it's very important that we can learn from our mistakes. So stop shifting. Now, the fact that you're shifting that, that, that responsibility and not admitting that mistake tells me or should is a sign that we lack elder self-esteem. We need not to be afraid to admit our mistakes. Now, let's just quickly recap quickly here. 
What are those six signs that we've gone through today? Number one is comparing yourself with others and having that feeling of inferiority. Number two is the difficulty in accepting compliment or even giving compliment. Number three is the difficulty to accept. Um, the difficulty to accept. Number three is being defensive in conversations. Overly defensive. Number four is lacking the social, the, the, the social skill, the confidence of, in the social skills of life. Number five is being overly con self-conscious of your status, your appearance, and your performance. And number six is shifting responsibilities on others, inability to admit mistakes and move on. Now, finally, let's just quickly look at this here. You see, confidence is material in life. Your confidence is material in, in all this process. These signs show that we need to fix something. I'm not saying that every of these signs is all, but it's not limited to this, but these six signs, if we have any one of them, what we need is to take the opportunity to fix our self-esteem. You see, in the next episode, or in the next video, which will be the last one, the last video in this part of Mirror Mirror on the Wall, we'll try and walk through what are those things we could do to fix our low self-esteem. I want to say thank you to everyone that's subscribed and supporting, and all your comments are very encouraging. I keep learning from your comments to bring to you better ways of doing things. It's a learning curve, but I thank you for your support. Your, your, your questions are also giving me ability to do more. You know, your feedback is also pushing me to make sure I do more. So thank you very much. And if you've not subscribed yet and, you're, and you want more quality content, I would want you to look down below and just um, click on the on the subscribe button and also click on the notification sign so that when I release new content, it you know you get notified of them. Thank you once again and I'll see you again in the next video. Cheers and bye.